Welcome to a new session on the course School Organization, Administration and Management. In this present session on first aid and emergency care in various situations, we will discuss topics like dealing with unconsciousness, choking, convulsions, dehydration, heat exhaustion, foreign bodies, heat stroke, hypothermia, dislocation and fractures. First we shall see how we can deal with unconsciousness. If you find your child unconscious or semi-conscious, your priority must be to keep the airway open and to keep checking whether they are becoming more deeply unconscious. Open the child's airway and check the breathing if necessary. Complete the ABC priorities. Once a child is breathing, check for signs of serious injury and control any serious bleeding. Place the child in recovery position. This keeps the airway open and lets vomit or saliva drain from the mouth without blocking the airway. Unconsciousness can develop gradually or suddenly from injury or illness. Common causes include head injury, lack of blood supply to the brain, lack of oxygen in the lungs, for example from electrical injury or a blocked airway, poisoning, diabetes, heat stroke or hypothermia or epilepsy. Checking for response. Your child may pass through various levels of confusion before becoming unconscious and again while regaining consciousness. Watch them constantly, noting any changes in their state of awareness as this will help the doctor decide on treatment. See if they respond to your voice or to a painful sensation such as a pinch. If the child recovers consciousness, reassure the child and get a doctor. If you suspect a fracture, support the fracture but don't pull the child into the recovery position. Continue to check breathing, pulse and level of response every 10 minutes. Never leave the child alone while they are unconscious or give the child anything by mouth. Anyone who has lost consciousness even for a short time must be seen by a doctor. Next we shall discuss choking. Choking occurs when the airway is partially or totally blocked. It can be caused by food going down the wrong way that is down the windpipe rather than the foot passage. The obstruction must be removed quickly so breathing is restored. Symptoms include blueness of the face, the child will be unable to speak or breathe and unconsciousness may develop. Remove anything in the child's mouth with your fingers and get them to cough the obstruction out. If this is unsuccessful, make them bend over so their head is lower than the chest. Slap them firmly between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand, repeat four times. If the object has not moved, try abdominal thrust. Check inside the mouth again. If you can see the obstruction, hook it out with your fingers. If your child is still choking, repeat back slaps and abdominal thrusts up, up to four times each. The child may begin breathing at any stage. When the child breathes, sit them up and give sips of water. For an unconscious choking child, choking will lead to unconscious unconsciousness if the obstruction is not quickly removed. If this happens, you will have to carry out mouth to mouth ventilation to try to get air past the blockage and into your child's lungs. Turn the child on the back, open the airway and start mouth to mouth ventilation. If this doesn't work, Put them on the side facing you. Supporting them against your thigh with your head back, do four back slaps. Look to see if the object has been dislodged and hook it out with your finger. If it has not been dislodged, try mouth to mouth ventilation again and repeat the above steps. Continue this procedure. 
If you succeed in dislodging the object, place the child in the recovery position. We shall see what an abdominal thrust is. This technique can be used if back slaps have failed to dislodge an obstruction. However, it can damage internal organs, so use only after treatment for choking has failed. Stand behind the child. Clench your fist and place it, thumb inwards, over the child's stomach between breastbone and tummy button. Grasp your fist with the other hand. Pull both hands towards you with a quick inward and upward movement. Repeat up to four times. The obstruction may shoot into or out of the child's mouth. Get medical help. We shall now discuss about convulsions. These are fits and are most common in children under 5. They can be caused by a very high temperature, a bad tummy upset, a fright or a temper tantrum or epilepsy. Convulsions look frightening but are not dangerous. Symptoms include high fever with a very hot forehead, stiffened body and arched back, twitching muscles, rolling eyes or a squint, face may look blue if holding their breath, froth may appear in the mouth. Loosen any tight clothing and make sure they have plenty of fresh air. Clear a space around them if the convulsions are severe and wipe away any froth. Cool the child by removing any bedding and sponging them down with tepid water. Take care not to let them get too cold. When the convulsions stop, place them in recovery position and put a light blanket over them. Next is dehydration. Dehydration is the result of an abnormally high loss of salt and water from the body. This can happen as a result of severe attack of diarrhea or vomiting or because of heavy sweating. To avoid dehydration, give children plenty to drink and keep them cool in hot weather. Dehydration can lead to heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion. Symptoms include cramp-like pains and headache, feeling exhausted but restless, dizziness and nausea, pale, moist skin, shallow fast breathing, rapid weak pulse. Lay your child down in a cool place. If the child is conscious, give them sips of cold water. If they are sweating a lot, has cramps, diarrhea or vomiting, Make sure they keep drinking as much as possible. If they become unconscious, open the airway and check breathing. Complete the ABC priorities if necessary and get medical help. Foreign bodies. These are small objects that enter the body through a wound or an opening such as the eye, ear or mouth. A foreign body in a wound may sometimes be plugging the wound and preventing blood loss. Children often swallow small items such as coins or beads or push them up their noses or into their ears. In the eye, bits of dust or grit, eyelashes or insects are the foreign bodies mostly, most commonly found in the eye. They usually stick to the outer surface of the upper eyelid making the eye painful, watery and red. However, they can be fairly easily removed. Never try and remove anything that is on the colored part of the eye or struck in the eyeball. If the child has such an injury, cover their eye with a sterile eye pad and take them straight to hospital. Try and stop the child from rubbing the eye. Make them sit in a chair facing the light and lean them back slightly. Wash your hands. Stand behind them with their head resting against you. Use your thumb and index finger to gently separate the lids and look into their eye. Ask them to look from side to side and up and down so you can see all the eye. If you can see the foreign body, try and wash it out by pouring cold water over the eye. If this doesn't work or there is no water, use a damp swab or corner of a clean handkerchief or tissue to lift the body off. 
If you think the foreign body is on the upper lid, try and get the child to look down. Holding the lashes of the upper lid, pull the lid down and over the lower lid. In the ear. This is the most common in young children who have a tendency to put small objects into their ears. The child will have a pain in the ear and hearing on that side may also be affected. Sometimes an insect may fly into the child's ears and they may also feel vibrations. Never poke anything in the child's ear. You could very easily push the insect to object even deeper causing damage to the eardrum. Reassure the child as much as you can. If you know it is an insect in the ear, sit the child down or lay them down on their side with the affected ear uppermost. Gently pour tepid water into the ear, the insect should float out. If the child has pushed something into the ear, try tilting the head so that the affected area is facing downward. The foreign body may then just drop out without any further problem. If you cannot remove the foreign body easily, take the child straight to the hospital. In the nose. This is the most likely to happen with very young children who will often try putting things such as beads, pebbles or marbles up their noses. If the object is smooth, it may simply become stuck, but a sharp object could damage the delicate tissues in the nose. If something does get lodged, your child may have a swollen nose and difficulty in breathing through the nose. There may also be a discharge. Keep the child as calm as possible and if they are old enough to understand, tell them to breathe through the mouth. Stop them from rubbing the nose. Don't try and remove the object yourself as you could push it further in. Get the child to a hospital as quickly as you can. Swallowed foreign bodies. Small children often swallow objects like coins, buttons, pieces of toys or pins. If the object is small and smooth, there is not much cause for concern. It is unlikely to cause choking or damage to the intestines as it passes through your child's body. Sharp objects, however, can cause internal injuries. Don't let the child run with pens or pencils in the mouth or play with the closures used on plastic bags. If the object has been become lodged in the child's throat, the child may be choking. Treat this as a matter of urgency. Reassure your child. Unless you are certain that the swallowed object is unlikely to cause any internal damage, get the child to a hospital as quickly as you can. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Next we shall discuss about heat stroke. This happens when the body is unable to control its temperature by sweating and can occur in hot, humid weather when there is no wind. Symptoms include restlessness, headache and dizziness, flushed, hot, dry skin, fast, strong pulse and a temperature of 40 degrees or more. The child may also lose consciousness rapidly. Lay the child down in the coolest place possible and take off the clothes. Cool them down with cold or tepid water. Fan the body by hand or with an electric fan. Continue to fan and sponge until the temperature falls below 38 degrees C. Cover with a dry sheet and get medical help urgently. Hypothermia Hypothermia results when the body temperature drops below 35 degrees. Small babies are particularly at risk from hypothermia. It can also be caused by lengthy immersion in cold water or by not being dressed warmly enough in cold weather. Other symptoms include cold, pale, dry skin, shivering, clumsy movements and slurred speech, gradual unconsciousness. It is best to rewarm someone with hypothermia at the speed at which 
they cool down. That is, you should quickly rewarm a child rescued after falling in the water and gradually rewarm a baby who has become chilled overnight. Replace any wet clothing with dry and put the child in a previously warmed bed. Place a covered hot water bottle in the child's left armpit or over the breastbone. Do not put hot water bottles on other parts of the body. Give them hot drinks and high energy food like chocolate. Get medical attention urgently. Next we shall see the case of dislocation. A dislocation occurs when a bone slips out of a joint. For example, the top of your arm bone fits into a joint at your shoulder. When it slips or pops out of the joint, you have a dislocated shoulder. You can dislocate almost any joint in your body including your knee, hip, ankle or shoulder. Since a dislocation means your bone is no longer where it should be, you should treat it as an emergency and seek medical attention as, as soon as possible. An untreated dislocation could cause damage to your ligaments, nerves or blood vessels. A joint may be dislocated if it is swollen, bruised or red, painful, difficult to move and out of place. Causes of dislocation Dislocations typically result when a joint experiences an unexpected or unbalanced impact. This might happen if you fall or experience a harsh hit to the affected area. After a joint dislocates, it is more likely to dislocate again in the future. Symptoms of dislocation some of the other symptoms associated with dislocated joints include loss of motion, pain during movement, numbness around the area, tingling feeling, first aid for dislocation. Leave the joint alone. Attempting to move or jam a dislocated bone back in can damage blood vessels, muscles, ligaments and nerves. Apply an ice pack. Ice can ease swelling and pain in and around the joint. Use ibuprofen or acetaminophen for pain. Here we will have a discussion on fractures. A bone fracture is a medical condition in which there is a partial or complete break in the continuity of the bone. In most severe cases, the bone may be broken into several pieces. A bone fracture may be the result of high force impact or stress or a minimal trauma injury as a result of certain medical conditions that weaken the bones such as osteoporosis, osteopenia, bone cancer or ontogenesis where the fracture is then properly termed a pathologic fracture. A bone may be broken inside the skin a simple fracture or the broken bone may break through the skin that is a compound fracture. A compound fracture is more dangerous because there is danger of infection through the wound. The symptoms. All symptoms are not present in all bone fractures. However, some of the symptoms are pain and tenderness at the point of fracture. Inability to move or use the injured part normally. Swelling at the point of fracture. Irregular shape at the broken point. This symptom will not appear when there is only one crack in the bone. Tenderness. There may be signs of shock also. Improper handling of a simple fracture may result in the puncture of a blood vessel or a compound fracture. Types of fractures. There is a range of fracture types including avulsion fracture. A muscle or ligament pulls on the bone fracturing it. Comminute fracture. The bone is shattered into many pieces. Compression or crush fracture. Generally occurs in the spongy bone in the spine. For example, the front portion of a vertebra in the spine may collapse due to osteoporosis. Fracture dislocation. 
a joint becomes dislocated and one of the bones of the joint has a fracture. Hairline fracture, a partial fracture of the bone. Sometimes this type of fracture is harder to detect with routine x-rays. Impacted fracture, when the bone is fractured, one fragment of bone goes into another. Intraarticular fracture, where the break extends into the surface of a joint. Longitudinal fracture, the break is along the length of a bone. Oblique fracture, a fracture that is diagonal to a bone's long axis. Spiral fracture, a fracture where at least one part of the bone has been twisted. Stress fracture, more common among athletes. A bone breaks because of repeated stresses and strains. Transverse fracture, a straight break right across a bone. Now let's see the treatment for fracture. Stop any bleeding. Apply pressure or medicine. Apply pressure on the wound with a sterile bandage, a clean cloth or a clean piece of clothing. Immobilize the injured area. Don't try to realign the bone or push a bone that is sticking out back in. If you have been trained in how to splint and professional help isn't readily available, apply a splint to the area above and below the fracture sites. Padding the splints can help reduce discomfort. Apply ice pack to limit swelling and relieve pain. Don't apply ice directly to the skin. Wrap the eyes in a towel, piece of cloth or some other material. Keep the fractured part above the body level. Treat for shock. If the person feels faint or is breathing in short, rapid breath, Lay the person down with the head slightly lower than the trunk and if possible elevate the egg legs. Simple fracture treatment. Get a doctor or other professionally tra trained person. Prevent further damage. Do not move the injured part. Apply a splint to the injured part. If you are in doubt about the part being broken, splint the part before moving the patient. Look after the patient, keep them warm or apply some shade if the sun is very hot, give a drink of hot tea, keep them lying down. Remove clothing or cut them off if necessary but do not move the patient until the splint has been applied. First aid of a compound fracture treatment. Send for doctor or other professionally trained person, there may be bleeding from the wound when the bones break through the skin. Hold a cloth over a flame to kill the germs and press the cloth gently but firmly over the bleeding spot. Splin the part, use traction method. Treat the patient for shock. As soon as a patient recovers from the shock, you should help them to the nearest hospital, health center or dispensary. Let us now summarize what we have just discussed. It is a good idea to familiarize oneself with some of the techniques we have discussed before you find yourself in a situation where you need to use them. When treating a child, keep in mind the principles of first aid to preserve the child, to prevent any deterioration in the child's condition and to promote their recovery. In this chapter, we discussed the most important emergency techniques for maintaining breathing, restoring heartbeat, controlling bleeding and dealing with unconsciousness and shock. Also, step-by-step -step treatment in case of emergencies were discussed. Fracture and dislocation are two different things which the first aider shall be able to differentiate. A bone gets fractured at any place but it gets dislocated at the joint. Bones of children get fractured while running, playing, jumping and doing exercises, etc. If the child is hurt or in pain, remember to comfort and reassure them as well as give them first aid. If you stay calm, this will help the child to feel secure and less frightened and will also help you think through what you need to do.
Thank you for watching this session on first aid and emergency care in various situations part 3. See you again with a new topic. Till then, goodbye.